I feel so ripped off. Bride to be Leslie ain't no lady. This Princess can walk in heels. Just tell her to shove it up her ass. Her groom Ron ain't no gentleman. Need to shoot something at least once a week. And their wedding is? It's just blah. Blah. What is that? Will Jane Deus Hinch need to pull out the big guns? I can inflict pain. Can supermodel Daria Super Agent help tame this blustery bride? This is your diva day, my friend. <laughs> or is it stormy weather ahead? What are you guys doing? These are my centerpieces! Guys, can, Connor, can you please be quiet just for one second? I need to get this done. I can't get this dirt open. Where's your father when I need him? Their wedding is eight days away, and bride-to-be Leslie is a little wound up. Things are very stressful about the wedding. There's just, there's so much to do. And our groom, Ron, has his own way of dealing with stress. Uh, shooting stuff. I feel that the wedding is very boring, especially for somebody who's actually pretty exciting at one point in time in his life. Oh, really? Oh. Damn, I got gogged. So while Ron lives out his Oliver Stone movie, Leslie gets down to brass tacks. Because if I want it done right, I need to do it myself. I had to make two phone calls for the wedding, and I, uh, I forgot. Anything for the wedding has to be done by me. Leslie's driving me nuts right now. She's insane. She is very insane. Ron, can you rake the leaves? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it later. You're later. playing. You can get it done while you're playing. Make a game of it. Game There's of it. been a fair amount of fighting involved that sometimes it seems like it, we're never going to pull this wedding off. You say things in your head and not through your mouth, and don't beep, 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 beep me. And their youngest son, Connor, is feeling poorly. So that doesn't help. Oh. Good job. Thing is, Leslie just wants what every girl wants, bliss. And so far, she feels her wedding is just... It's just blah. Blah. Very blah and I need some sizzle, some glamour, some elegance, and right now, I just have nothing exciting. I wanted the wedding of my dreams, and I feel so ripped off that Ron just didn't want to pay for anything that I wanted. I need you to write a check for me. What is it for? For the cake, $250. You could be kidding me. And $600 for chair covers. I really wanted chair covers, but he, when we heard the price, it was just wow. But since Ron keeps snipping her ideas in the bud, Leslie put him in charge of the fall forest-themed decor. Do you know everything you're getting? Uh, no. OK, so I need large leaf garland. Large leaf garland. You need little leaf garland. I do write things on my hand. I write uh, probably everything I need to remember in a day, or if I had anything at work I remember. I'm not very professional. Um, I'm pretty much lost where I'm going. I should have written on a piece of paper instead of my hand. She's gonna kill me. Hello? Yeah, Les? Um, I kind of wiped off the address of the place I'm supposed to be going to. Great job. Uh, do you think you can get it for me again? Hey, Ron, why don't you buy a notepad while you're there? What the heck was that again? I rubbed that off, too. Oh, buddy, are you in trouble? Can I help you with something? Yeah, I'm looking for stuff, and I seem to erase it off my hand. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hello? Uh, we have a problem. They really don't have any garland. You can't get any garland. How about magnolia leaves? I'm dealing with a bride. Grape garland? Just tell her to shove it up her ass. Oh, Princess Leslie doth have a fiery tongue. Well, put that fire extinguisher away for now, because Chief Jane Deus Hinch is here to grant our couple three wishes to keep this wedding from going up in smoke. But first, she needs to meet Leslie and Rambo. Oscar, this is all a bit scary. Leslie. I'm Jane. Leslie. Hi, nice to meet you. Leslie, I got you cool. We haven't got to go in there, have we? No, because thankfully, Shooter McBang Bang drops the gun to talk to the ladies. Oh. You must be Ron. Yeah. I had just that horrible feeling for one second that you're going to say, and we're going to turn this into a reception venue. Never. I think that'd be a great idea. Never. Please. When is the wedding? Seven days away. Seven days away, and you're paintballing. Yeah, I got to take the stress out somewhere. And what have you got to do? 
there's a long list of things to do. So while Leslie goes on a tangent, Ron slips into darkness. Until something finally brings him back to the light. Run, run, hello. Who's doing the decorating? It'll me, the groomsmen, we're gonna do it. And that's what's scaring the pants off of Leslie. The decor, I want the wow factor when people walk in and they have the blah factor. What, what are you thinking is the wow factor? What, what is it? I wanted an enchanted forest. And what I got is a stick and a pine cone. We have the one that doesn't like to open up his wallet. Leslie wants this incredible wedding, but with no time and no money, how am I gonna do that? So Jane takes her leave to work on the battle plan, and later that day, it's shock and awe for the couple. Wow. When I first saw the board, it was uh, actually more overwhelming than I did think there was to do. The table and the room decor you wanted, Leslie, the wow factor. What is gonna give this wow factor? The centerpieces, we're talking flowers, and you've said that you want apples but that needs to be made creatively. Obviously, that's something you're going to be doing. Are we having chair covers? No, just the head no. table. Just the head table? Yes. So, Ron, because when he's been asked in the past to do things, has forgotten. How are you going to remember to do that? Probably write it down on my hand. I noticed as you came, you've washed your hands, look. <laughs> See, and he went to the washroom, washed his hands, and now you can't remember it. This is what I've been dealing with. I can inflict pain. Please do. So I am now going to say no paintballing. You have to abstain from paintballing this week to get all these things done. As you know, I'm a fairy godmother. I can grant you three wishes. With so much to go on in one week, I think you're going to need every wish you've got to pull this together. Ron and Leslie have now got the board, and they've taken it away with them. I hope he doesn't wash the board like he washes his hands. There's a lot of crucial timing that we need to get done day by day right now. Hoping. Hoping. OK, guys, over here by Mama. I really wanted, for the decor, just elegance, sheer elegance in the hall. But I ended up getting steel buckets, and we're going to be putting apples in them. Aha. Uh -huh. So with just six days to go, Leslie enlists child labor to transform them into enchanting centerpieces. It's just not going to work. All right, let's ah, make a mess. <laughs> Oh, this is really kind of horrible. Hey, hey, hey! Excuse me! But no messing around for the renegade soldier because he's cleaning his, uh, gun. John, Jane banned me from paintball, but she didn't ban me from cleaning my gun. You can't play with no pieces of junk. That's nice. And oh so useful. But Buddy Big Guns makes it back inside just in time for Leslie to blow a gasket. Stop it! No three-year-old's gonna tell me off today. Zip it! I am trying to do centerpieces for the wedding. Breathe, Leslie, breathe. So Leslie goes out for some <clears throat> air, and her little darlings feel peckish. It's free! Hey, 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 hey! What are you guys doing? These are my centerpieces! What are we gonna do? Hi, Jane. I have my first wish. I really need your help with the centerpieces. Okay. Goodness. So armed with their own buckets, Leslie and Ron meet Janie Appleseed to get to the core of their wish. We need to replace all the apples that the boys ate and get a lot more. We need a lot more apples. Cut in the act. Oh my goodness. So Jane still has her work cut out for her to make these centerpieces shine. With five days to go, Leslie leaves the kids with Ron while she begins her princess transformation, and none too soon. Now, at this point in my life, I want to be a princess. I want one day that I can be the most girly girl. Does Les know how to walk like a bride? No, not without a couple drinks. Are you going to be able to walk? I'm stepping on it. Growing up with Leslie around the neighborhood and hanging out with all the boys, she was very much a tomboy. And today, she's still very much a tomboy. <laughs> what kind of shoes have you got under that? Put some heels on you. Princesses Princess don't. Princesses can walk in heels. 
While Leslie scales new heights, Jane looks to her royal source and finds Centerpiece Central. How do I bring glamour to this wedding? I went to the premier floral decor institute. Do you fancy a competition, ladies? Yes! Floral students, meet your material. So, ladies, three, two, one. And remember, we're on a budget. You've got to cost this out. So whose creative masterpiece will win while staying within the time? Meanwhile, back at Bridal Ranch, yeehaw! This high-heeled filly is still trying to buck up. Oh, okay, up, 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 up. I don't think okay. this is working. Does this count? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it's down to the wire, and Jane's nose is starting to sniff out a winner. Okay, everybody. We're finished up, and it's up to you to decide uh, <laughs> which one you like to choose. I'm enjoying this judging thing. I feel a bit like Simon Cowell. Out of 18 people, how could I choose one winner? I picked the four best winning entries. Well, at least we know those apples are tucked in nicely. It feels like my boobs are gonna fall out. Let's hope that Leslie's girls feel the same. I definitely think we need another crinoline. Another crinoline? Yeah. I need, I need something to come out more. This is too, I don't know how I'm gonna walk around in this poofy thing. Probably you're gonna need some help. Hi, Jane. I really need your help how to show me how to be a bride for the day. This tomboy wants to be a princess? Gotta reach high for that crown. And so with her new gown girth in mind, Leslie scopes out the crap apple car her dad has rented for her. It would have been really nice showing up to the church in the limo. Um, how am I going to fit in there? I'm going to have to tie you to the roof. I'm not going to fit my dress through there. Even we lift you in, but you're not going to fit lengthways either. It's not good. But now with four days to go, tension is mounting as Connor's cough develops into bronchitis. The wedding's just a few days away, so it's kind of scary. He went to the doctors today and he, he got some medicine, so we're keeping the fingers crossed that he's gonna be able to actually be at the wedding and we're not gonna have to get married in a hospital. With three days left until the wedding, Jane turns to her magical Rolodex for the bride's second wish. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. When's How the good? last time we saw each other, London? Elmer is a top model agent. He teaches the girls how to model and walk and strut their stuff. Today, you have to be a princess. So think like a princess. This is your diva day, my friend. <laughs> and those models are divas. We know all the secrets to make you tall, elegant. But I need Jane's help because with the train, I may not be that expert on the train, but between the two of us, you're going to look amazing. There's no way, Jane, I'm wearing those. You can forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really understand this doesn't wear heels. I was born in heels. You, you, can, you can become two inches taller just by raising the core, because without you knowing it, you're automatically losing shrinking. Shrinking down. Yes, taller. Yeah. OK, stand taller. Yeah, lift your core up a bit. A bit. And I would, not, uh, I would not swing the arms so much. Jane, come to the rescue. Well, I think. If we make it a bit more real with a bouquet, photographer, that's all you'll see is greenery and stems. Okay. If you do this, you can see into the flowers. And also uh, uh, stretch this chin out a little bit without uh, looking awkward. Because without knowing it, I mean, it's just a natural thing. I've noticed you automatically pull that chin in. This is how most brides would walk with their father. But if you take two steps in a big dress, I guarantee that you'll be Stepping on the dress. Put your hand on the top. And then you have space. And this is a hinge. You can walk anywhere. And no one will step on your dress. Wow. Oh, how fabulous. Oh, this will be much nicer. Make the dress follow you. Walk it round. Walk the dress round. See? It follows you. No matter where you go, that dress will follow. And so with that, Elmer the Model Whisperer leaves Leslie with a few more pointers. And there's another th secret that models do all the time. If you if you can make your, um, once your makeup is done, the, you can have a little bit of a smirk. And what it does is it brings the corners of your lips up and makes you look happy. OK? <laughs> I wonder what Mr. Help Me With The Wedding is doing. Chocolate, better than marriage. <laughs> I guess it calms me out, but 
No, I don't usually talk to her about my chocolate fiend. Yeah, that's interesting. Good work, tough guy. Mm. Meanwhile, Leslie has to tough it out in round two of Jane's Lady Boot Camp. Hello. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Adiodato, this is Leslie. How do you do? And nice Leslie you. is my bride for this weekend. She would like to eat elegantly right. at the wedding meal. She's kind of evolved over the years and she wants to start to look and act like a girl. <laughs> Take the napkin and it stays in your lap throughout the meal. And once you got your napkin down here, you're not getting up. What if I have to go to the washroom? You don't. The queen doesn't go to the bathroom. And when you're toasting, you go a little under because I'm older than you. You go a little under, yes. And make sure it's So I go notice. lower. Just a tiny touch. Oh. But since you're the bride, probably everybody is going to go under you. If so they that is through. out of respect for the person. Yes. I but did not know that. But since you're the bride, let me go under you. Okay. Last but not least, don't dare to have a cigarette in your hand when you are wearing your beautiful gown. She's not allowed to smoke in her dress. <laughs> you know? Are you kidding? Sorry. I find that all too amusing. And absolutely no chewing of gum. I'm a gumaholic. The princess does not stand there going. <sighs> you forgot the gum. <laughs> right? Right. Right. So after her dress rehearsal, Leslie soon realizes she has car trouble. Hello. Hi, Jane. This isn't a wish yet, but I'm having issues with the car. Well, this is the car. This is the car. This is a bit of a small car. I've brought some props to try and simulate a wedding dress so you can see what it feels like to try and get in this car in a dress. OK. Now, are we getting the feeling? I would say we're getting the feeling. So it would seem that our princess has a queen-size duvet dilemma. So she asked Jane for help with the third wish. So I have a problem with my dad. What's the problem with your dad? It's trying to convince him to maybe upgrade. So what are you asking me to do? If you could go and talk to my dad and see if he'll rent a limo. Why am I doing her dirty work for her? Why can't she go and ask daddy herself? What a wasted wish. Welcome, Jane. With one day to go, Jane has to sell the car idea to Leslie's dad. She doesn't want to offend you or hurt your feelings in any way that you've very generously said, you know, I'll get you a car. But I've come to say to you, thank you very much, but the car is too small. But to fulfill the wish, <laughs> I'm relying on you to go and find a car. Do you think you'll be able to? I'll find a car. I'll pull all the strings I can get. I've always called her little one. She could be 65 years old, but she's still my little one. Daddy, can I have a carriage? It's not that hard, is it? So for now, Leslie's car wish is up in the air, but later that day, the rehearsal comes yes. crashing down when she sees her ailing little boy. We need to get him home. We need to get him home. He needs an inhaler now. It's a wedding day and a sun's ill. Water? Do you have water? What do you do? Leslie and Ron are suffering from a severe case of the wedding humdrums. Right now, I have such a blah wedding, and I need some sizzle. Well, luckily, Jane Deus Hinge can cure them with three wedding wishes to make their day full of style and grace. For wish one, she turned buckets that fizzled into centerpieces that sizzled. And for wish two, Leslie went from ho-hum to glam-yum. This is your diva day, my friend. <laughs> and for wish three, Leslie asked Jane. If you could go and talk to my dad and see if he'll rent a limo. Why am I doing her dirty work for? Finally, the day has arrived. And true to his word, Ron and his groomsmen are channeling their inner Martha Stewart's. I need to go get drunk to do this. What is that? We have garland from here to here. And that's it. Are you, are you going to finish that? Good thing Jane's in the house to whip these boys into shape. And hallelujah! Looks like Mr. Tightwad has come through on the chair covers. Meanwhile, back at the bride's house, Connor's feeling better, and it looks like his appetite's back. You bit him! Why did you bite him? And it seems that Daddy has taken Jane's request to heart. It's gorgeous! And transforms a four-door pumpkin into a gleaming carriage. A 
going to sit through. <laughs> you will fit. It was amazing walking out my front door and seeing that car. I can't cry. I'm going to my makeup. <laughs> so proud. I could do something for her today. Now it's my turn. <laughs> but I don't have makeup. <laughs> Okay, can I zip up now? There you go, my dear. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> You're absolutely beautiful. I love you. I love you too. I know. <laughs> Big eyes, big eyes, big eyes. <sighs> And so Daddy's carriage pulls up. There you are. And our Cinderella emerges. With a few last words of wisdom and encouragement, Leslie becomes the princess she always dreamt of. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Relaxed, tall, elegant. Hold it together. She just made me so proud. I run, take me Leslie. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. So death do us part. I think it's gonna go on. <laughs> <laughs> I have officially declared you husband and wife. <laughs> She walked beautifully. That train, goodness me. It was as though she'd always walked in a dress with a train. Oh, she was beautiful. She was radiant today. I thought she did wonders. The wish that Jane granted to make me a formal bride, I really did feel like a princess bride today. Everyone's eyes on me. I, I felt beautiful, just a princess. And Leslie's day just gets better and better. Ready? Close your eyes. You wanted an enchanted wedding. You wanted it full. You wanted it all beautifully lit. Leslie, here's your dream. <laughs> Isn't that it? <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. When I walked into that hall and saw those beautiful centerpieces that everyone put together, they made the table look very elegant. Now, would you please welcome and receive Mr. and Mrs. Ron and Leslie Knowles. This is for you. You have made the wedding of my dreams, and I couldn't imagine anything else. It took a team of six skilled people to transform this tomboy into this elegant young lady. Did she do it? Flawless. Well, almost. You can need some spot to hold things. You picked up my sweaty cleaner. Oh. That's disgusting. OK, let's do this so we can go back to the party. Remember, we got married today. I just gotta know what's in here. Kiss a bridesmaid, that's no fun. So I think I'll do one of my own kiss the wedding planner. It says kiss the wedding planner. There's tickets in there that says kiss the wedding planner. I was hoping for the groomsman. Never mind. 